In this lesson, I'm going to talk about simplifying radical expressions. There's two things that uh, I'm going to sort of focus on. The first is simplest radical form. which is probably, it may have been discussed in Algebra 1 class or in geometry, it's very important to do simplest radical form just because of how um, important radicals are when you deal with Pythagorean theorem and such things. And the other side of it is I want to continue on, if you've seen the intro to radicals that I did, um, the idea that I could look at the fourth root of x or the square root or whatever as really just a fractional exponent. So I want to continue with that line of logic. So if you're not in on that, probably there's other videos that would serve you uh, maybe a little bit better. So let's go on and do some. It would have helped if I'd had this clipped into presentation mode. All right, so in this case, um, I'm dealing with the, what's the square root of 98? Now, I know that, the square root, that 98 doesn't have a square root that works out normally, so I'm going to have to do simplest radical form. As a quick review of simplest radical form, what I'm really doing is I'm taking the squares, so 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, uh, 81, 100, on and on and on. I'm going to divide the number that's inside by these squares to see if I can break 90 up and in 98 into parts that I can actually simplify. I need to know if it's possible to simplify it. So I'm going to do, let's say, 98 divided by 36. And it gives me a uh, an, an integer, a non-integer answer. I get 2.72. So that one's probably not it. If I divide by 4, I get 24 and a half, so that's probably not it either. And if I do 9, it's not looking good. So I'm going to try one more. I'm going to divide it by 49. So I'm doing 98 divided by 49. And what I get is 2, which what that really means is that 49 times 2 equals 98, which is important for us because I'm going to break this up into parts. Now it becomes the square root of 49 and the square root of 2, because I'm just separating it out. I'm allowed to do that. Well, the square root of 49 is just 7, and the square root of 2 is as far down as it goes. It's reduced. So all I do to get my simplified answer is just write one behind the other. So it's a little bit of um, trees for the forest conversation. I need to break it up and then look at parts individually as opposed to looking at this grand and huge thing that I could never do. So in this case, I'm going to probably try somewhere around 5 if it doesn't work on its own. But if you do square root of 245, it, you know, it doesn't really give you what you want. I meant not divided by 5, I meant divided by 25. And if I divide 245 by 25, it doesn't work. But I know that 5 goes into it, so I'm just going to take a lark here and say, okay, what's 245 divided by 5? So what is... 245 divided by 5, well it gives me 49. So sometimes you it just works out the way that I need it to. So I'm going to break this up into the square root of 49. Always put your square first because it'll make it easier to write later. And 5. Well, the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 5 doesn't do anything, so my final answer is 7 square root 5. Not, you know, super complicated to do. Let's look at another one. Let's change the level a little bit. Now in this case, I'm dealing with the same situation with 128. I need to break it up into parts. And I know that 16 goes into it. I'm going to try 36 just out of a whim. It doesn't work. 64 does. So 128 divided by 2 gives me 64. Sometimes dividing by the little numbers, even if they're not squares, will get you squares, so you might want to try that. So what I'm going to do is break this part up into the square root of 64 and the square root of 2. What I'm going to do with this is a little different. Now, of course, I can get down and square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 2 is the square root of 2. So I know that part of it's going to be 8 square root of 2. With this, I need to see if I can reduce the square root of p. So I'm actually going to convert it into p to the first power raised to the 1 half, because remember, there should be a 2 here. Well, when I raise an, 
uh, the coefficient in front by an exponent. I need to multiply the exponents together because it's the little brother uh, operation. So I end up doing 1 times 1 half. Unfortunately for me, it doesn't reduce to anything. I don't get a number over top that I actually have a mixed number. If that's the case, whatever I get here goes back under the radical sign, so I end up back where I started at the square root of p. So it doesn't actually reduce at all. What that means for my answer is I need to put it back under the radical sign. If something had come out, I'd put it out in front. That's a little bit overwhelming maybe. Let's do another one. In this case, um, I'm going to do 216. I'm going to divide by a bunch of stuff for a little while. Well, if I divide by 9, if I divide by 36, it gives me 36. So all I'm doing is, I'm not showing it to you because it's a lot more writing than you, it would be confusing, is I divided 216 by 3 and it gave me 72 and I knew that another square was probably under there so I just kept going up uh, to try to get me to the point that it's 36. Well it ends up giving me 6. So I'm going to break this into square root of 36 times square root of 6. For my x squared, or x squared, the square root of x squared, I'm going to, once again, I'm going to convert it into a form that I can use. So what I'm really doing is this, and that's raised to the one half power, and that means 2 over 2, because remember it's 2 over 1, and that ends up like canceling out, so it ends up being x to the first power. The nice thing is, since I don't have any fraction left over, that means that this number actually comes, this is how much actually comes out of the uh, square root, which makes sense. I mean, squaring and square root are opposites. <clears throat> so I bring this down, I get 6. My x goes with it, because it actually came out, and I end up with square root of 6. You know, a little bit of looking at each piece individually as opposed to looking at this big gigantic thing that's very overwhelming. Um, this one's a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this one's a little bit, you know, it's not super complicated. It's another square root question. It's got 125 in it. So I'm guessing that 25 goes into it, and it does. So 125 divided by 25 gives me 5. So this breaks out into square root of 25 and 5. These two, on the other hand, I'm going to do that part of it again. I'm sort of skipping a step there, so if you get confused, look at the last slide. You can see the sequence that I went through to get there, because it's to the second power here. Now, what this gives me is x and 3 over 2, or x 1 and 1 half. This one, y 1 and 1 half. Now, the reason that I wrote them in mixed number format in the exponent, which you never do, by the way, um, is because of the fact that uh, I wanted to show you that this x to the first actually makes its way out of the uh, square root. Same over here. These make it out. So since the square root of 25 is 5, I get the x that makes it out and the y that makes it out. What I'm left with underneath is this. See how they're fractions still? So really this just goes back to being the square root of x and this one just goes back to being the square root of y once I pulled the x and y out. So 5xy. So it's exactly the same inside as outside, which is a little bit of a kind of a weird answer. Now if you think about it really, uh, the square root of 125, you do the simplest radical form and that whole thing, and then you're doing the cube, uh, the square root of x to the third power. Well, if I pop the square out, so really if I had this, That's x to the third power, so this will come out. The square root of x squared is x. That's why this is left underneath. I just tend to do it this way because, for me, it makes it more apparent that I'm going to keep it in part of it inside and part of it outside. But there's that. Um, I think I'll do. I'll skip up and do one of the, maybe one of the bigger ones. In this case, I have something to the third root. So I have to think. Okay, does is. Does uh, anything multiply it by itself three times to give you a thousand? And it does, which is why I chose this one because it's actually a much easier one. So this one actually becomes 
the cube root of 1,000 is actually just 10. That's why I picked it. Now on the other side, x to the fourth raised to the third power, I'll do the sequence this time, is really x to the fourth, or sorry, the cube root of x to the fourth is really x to the fourth raised to the one third power. Whereas y, uh, the cube root of y, is really y to the first raised to the one third power. In this case, nothing really happens. You end up back where you started, so it stays underneath. On this side, however, you end up with uh, 4 times 1 third is 1 and 1 third. So you get this little piece that pops out. That's a good thing. So this becomes x, and your remainder, once you take four, uh, 3 away from 4, is 1. So you end up with this whole thing, which goes back to being right here. So I get 10 to the x, which is a good thing. And then underneath, I'm left with x and why? See, it's a little bit of a crazy sort of setup, but if you just break it into parts and then go back and do it, you can get the correct answer. Um, one more. I made a t billion of these. Uh, sometimes you have to do ones that have absolute value signs. That's only if you have a, uh, an even numbered index. I'm just going to say this part and skip around it. If you have a odd numbered index, it's going to not have absolute values, but anything that you'd pull out in front would need to have an absolute value if it uh, makes it out from underneath that uh, radical sign, just so you know. One more really big one, hopefully. This is kind of like one of those crazy weird things, and it's got a number on the outside, which is something that I wanted to cover. This 7 is not inside anything, so it's actually going to stay out here where it belongs for now, and then I'm going to start looking at these things. Well, negative 2, 1, 6. I need to think, is there something I can sort of uh, multiply and make that actually work? So I know that uh, in 216, the thing I can multiply by itself three times and get it is 6. But it's negative. Fortunately for me, it's an odd index. So I know it's negative 6 is what it's going to end up being. So I can break this part out. And it's going to give me negative 6 down here. And that's going to actually be affected by the 7 later, but not yet. We'll, we'll worry about that in a second. Now, uh, with these, I'm dealing with a to the 8th raised to the 1 3rd, b to the 3rd raised to the 1 3rd, and c to the 5th raised to the 1 3rd. Now, following my stream of logic from before, this would be a to the 2 and 2 thirds. This would be b to the first, and this would be c to the 1 and 2 thirds. So I really have sort of a breakout moment here where I have a squared comes out, and I'm left with a to the second power underneath there. On this one, I'm good. It's just b to the first. And here, I end up with c to the first. Over here, uh, the 2 on top means I have c squared underneath the radical sign. Now, I can work with all of these things. Here's one, here's one, here's one. So those are all three things that come out. So I get negative 6 and then a squared, b, and c. The problem is I can't forget about 7. It's already outside, so the relationship becomes multiply. I end up with negative 42. Now I can put my a squared, b, and c. Underneath, the things that didn't make it out, it's kind of like being in a mine, it's trapped inside. I have a squared still trapped inside, b made it out, good there, and then c squared is left inside. So you get this as your final answer. Let me just make sure I'm correct, because uh, occasionally I'll mess one of these up. I actually got this one right, that's a good thing, but that's it. So a little simplest radical form, a little breaking them into fractions and seeing if you have any sort of mixed numbers and so that tends to be the way that I view doing this in a simple form that I can actually work with. So uh, there are plenty of other ways to do it. So if this didn't work for you, make sure you grab somebody else's video and check that out.